Hello everyone. I wanted to give you some pointers and some guidelines about the protein isolation lab write-up and make sure that you recall everything that we talked about in class before we broke. So first thing, the file name. When you save your PDF, if you could put uh, the period either a one or a three, whichever class you are in, so it'd be period underscore and then the one or the three, and then your last name, please. And then as the suffix, the protein isolation lab. This will really help me to organize the files by period and then by student. So period underscore, then a one or a three, underscore last name, and then protein isolation lab. That would be fantastic. So the notes that we took in class, these are the actual notes. I pulled them from my desk at school. So you're typing everything in Arial font. Uh, everything is in 12 point except for the title. If you could make the title 16 point and center it, that would be great. Uh, don't forget that this is all inside of the header. If you could then right hand justify your name and your period. So name and period to the right hand side, protein isolation lab title in the middle, everything 12 and then the title as 16. Then the research question that we discussed, what is type one diabetes? And how is it related to protein isolation from E. coli? Don't forget the E. coli are the bacteria that are producing the protein for us. The E. coli are producing the fluorescent protein. And what we're simulating here is how E. coli in pharmaceutical use, how E. coli produces insulin, human insulin, for type 1 diabetics. And then underneath that research question in the discussion section, you're going to answer the research question. Then figure one, the original colony of the GMO E. coli. This is the title of this figure. Now this is the picture that you took on your phone of the fluorescent colony. Don't forget to trim this, please. Keep uh, as much of the black edge away from the Petri plate. And then underneath that figure, discuss how this petri plate contains genetically engineered e coli i don't want you thinking that e coli that the wild type of e coli is fluorescent these e coli had a jellyfish gene put into them that's why these oak these e coli are actually gmos so discuss how this petri plate contains genetically engineered e coli the e coli contains jellyfish genes that are producing fluorescent proteins and then this is the title for that figure, whether you put the title on top of the figure or whether you put the title underneath is totally up to you. So that's figure one. And then after figure one, of course, is figure two. So then figure two, it says the final tube or the final tubes of fluorescent protein. Some of you when you put your fluorescent tubes on the ultraviolet light, you put one tube, or maybe you and a couple of friends, there are two or three tubes, or maybe you came back later and took a picture of eight, or maybe after the eye beers did it, you took a picture of 12 or 16 of them. Whatever picture you have of the final tube or the final tubes showing the fluorescent protein. Because again, what we're simulating is how pharmaceutical companies isolate the insulin out of GMO E. coli. And since we can't deal with human proteins and human DNA, um, we are, are using jellyfish genes that have, put in, that have been put into the E. coli. So same thing, whether you put the actual picture and then the title, or whether you put the title and the picture, the order is up to you. Don't forget to make it figure two. And then underneath that figure, discuss what this tube contains. This tube contains fluorescent protein. And how does this relate to type 1 diabetes and insulin? Again, we're simulating the same protocol that pharmaceutical companies use. The production of human insulin is an international, multi-billion dollar business. And the protocol that you did in class is what pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies do, just on a much, much larger scale. Then there are four lab questions that you're going to answer. You never have to write the questions, ever. You only need to respond to these using complete sentences. And so then here are the six questions. So what's the goal of the fluorescent protein lab? 
Uh, what's the TE buffer, the lysozyme, the nickel beads, the elution buffer. And then this handout actually shows why you use each one. We use the TE buffer, that's the buffer we originally put on the plate before we rubbed the, the surface of the Petri plate to get the uh, bacteria off. We use the TE buffer because it hydrates uh, the surface of the auger. We then use the lysozyme because it lyses or cuts open the cells and allows the cytoplasm to be released from the cell. Then why the nickel beads? That's when you put the solution that contained the fluorescent protein, you wash that solution over the beads because the fluorescent protein adheres or attaches or sticks to the nickel beads. And, and so the vocabulary term that, that you want to use instead of stick uh, would be adhere. So the fluorescent protein adheres to the nickel beads. And then why do we use the elution buffer? Elution is from the Latin root elute, which means to wash. So we then use this buffer because this buffer washes the fluorescent protein off of the nickel beads. And then how is the pur purification of your fluorescent protein related again to type one diabetes, uh, Mrs. Mains and E. coli. So E. coli is a bacteria, it's found everywhere. We genetically modify E. coli with the human insulin gene. The E. coli then reads that DNA and produces the protein insulin. We then take that insulin and put it into bottles and sell it to type one diabetics like Mrs. Maines, who is an English teacher on campus over in the 500 building. And so that is your lab write-up. Now, common pitfalls, common mistakes that we see. Commonly see that the header isn't justified, that students don't center the title and they don't push their name and the period over to the right-hand side. Uh, students sometimes don't type an Arial in 12 and they don't put the title in 16. Uh, in the discussion, be sure that you block the text. If you don't remember how to do that, reach out to me, send me a message or a text and, and we will help you out. Then be sure that the two figures that you put in, that each figure has a number, figure one and figure two, and then be sure that you title the figures. Please crop the images, cut as much of the black off of the edge as possible. When you refer to the bacteria, the full species name is Escherichia coli. Most people don't write out Escherichia coli, so we just write E. coli. Uh, you always capitalize the E, and then the coli is always lowercase, and they're both underlined. When you talk about Petri plates, Petri is a man's name. It's named after Robert Petri, a famous microbiologist. So that's actually a proper noun. So when you write Petri plate, you don't have to capitalize plate, um, just the name Petri. And then always, 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 whenever you turn in typewritten work, you always run spell check and you always proofread. That's how you be a pro and that's how you turn in high quality work. So don't forget to properly title the file so you'll create this as a PDF and then post it to our shared folder. And if you could post that in the folder by this Friday, that would be great. Thank you, everyone.